I took a photograph recently uh, in John's garden back at uh, Bondi, uh, no, he's at Saxby, sorry, and uh, I rather liked it as a watercolour, so I thought today, I was doing demos here, and I would probably go at this one, and get it, this, this one, which is rather attractive in the lights and darks, it's quite detailed, but because it's a bit of masking fluid today, and I showed the different stages of this, uh, working through in just watercolours. So I've got all my tools and brushes here. I've got several sets of these, but there's enough there. All different sorts of brushes and the photograph, a jar of water, and my Russian um, paints, the Sony paints, which are quite strong, um, not expensive, but very nice for doing uh, stronger greens like this, I think. So I'm going to start with drawing out, and then I'm going to use some masking fluid just to bring out the different lights and darks ahead of time. The Sony are nice because they've got this um, chart of colours amongst them because they're not easy to see when they're in the palette as you see there. So I'm drawing first and then we'll mask and then we'll start the painting. Right, so what I've got to do now is start putting in the masking fluid into the lighter areas where I want sharp edges. Right, so what I need to do is paint in all of these little light areas with the masking fluid so that when I do the painting over the top, I can move that later and all these bits of white will sparkle through. I also want to paint the very light areas of colours too, like these very bright leaves here. and. Um, not all of them, in fact, but mainly the white areas, but some of these lighter leaves like these coming through into here, and, and the light areas of these pinks as well. Can I leave those behind for later and go back in with the paint afterwards? Some areas I want to be lost and found edges, so some will be wet, into, wet next to wet, working into each other. Some areas will be quite hard edges like these, where I'll let the paint dry and then paint wet over the top so we get a sharp edge. So wet next to wet or wet into wet will give me a soft edge and wet on dry will give me a hard edge. A hard edge will also come from the masking fluid when I remove it as well. So if I want a soft blurry edge I'm going to paint that into damp paint or just blur it in with clean water afterwards. So this masking fluid I'm using is the Pebio drawing gum. I like it particularly because it's a blue colour and if you use the white one you can't see where you put it. So if I put the blue one on it'll dry blue and I know where I've been then. So you can use um, a clay shaper to put it on, you can it with a fun tool, just a rubber tip, or you can use a fine nylon uh, brush, but do be careful to get it off your brush at the end because it does, it's very hard to get off from a, an ordinary brush. From a clay shaper or a rubber point it's much easier, or even a sharpened stick. But I'm going to be using this brush today and I need to make sure that I wash it out well. So Padillo, and it's a blue drawing gun, and whatever little white spots are, white areas, I want to paint that in with the gum. Some of this I want to paint wet into wet, so I, I sharp put the masking fluid on, where it's going to be painted into each other, into another colour or blended. So you can see the blue uh, masking fluid, but you can see why I use the blue now, because I can see what I'm doing. I can see where it's gone. Right, so I think I've just about got enough masking fluid on there now for all these little textures and highlights. Rough against smooth, light against dark, warm against cool, but those things are not armoury. You see what's going to go on here with the light against the dark, rough against the smooth, and warm against the cools as well. We've got various different coloured hues of the greens. You've got lots of warm yellowy greens and cool bluey greens and turquoises going on here. I'm going to start with the lightest colour, so I'll start with all of these yellows and so on. I think that's going to be about all I need to do for the, for the masking. So I'll wash my brush off now before that goes solid on there. Now when I'm talking about clay shapers, these tools are clay shapers here, and you see they've got a rubber tip to them. Uh, used obviously for shaping clay and sculpture, but actually for using masking fluid they're excellent as well because the masking fluid just rubs off these and it doesn't ruin them as it, as it can a brush. These are brushes I'm going to use today, my lovely large oval mop, a, a round number six here, 
and a rigger brush. I think I know I'm going to need those at least. I may add more as I go along. Most of my work is going to be done with this oval mop. I've also got a little diffuser or atomizer here for water in case I need to dampen an area as I'm working. Paints are set up down there ready to go. So let's start our first colours. And I'm going to start with the lightest colours, the very light yellowy greens and yellows. Now the first thing to do and one of the most important things is remember to make sure that your masking fluid is dry because if it isn't, it'll come off with the water onto your brush, mess up the whole painting and also mess your brushes up. So that's now dry enough. It goes slightly darker with this Pabillo which is nicer so you can see that it is dry and ready. Plenty of water. I'm going to dampen my paints. I want to start with a cool yellow so I'm going to start with my lemon yellow. It cleans up my palette. And I'm painting wet into wet and wet next to wet at the moment. So let's start with these lovely yellowy greens here. You can see the colours not far off on that. There's a little bit of muck in it already. So I want this to be fairly sharp edged here so I'm going to let it dry slightly as I go along and you can see now how the masking fluid is actually resisting that and I can paint those colours in later. I can remember where the purples are as well because uh, I've got some purples to put in here that I've left so that I can go wet next to wet. Right round here, keeping it fairly wet at the moment. In fact, I'm going to put a bit of water over here, a thin layer of this paint. Really build up this whole level of layer of um, lights coming through. I've already got the whites in the members, so I can afford to do this. Right down through here. See how that masking fluid is making sense already. In fact, the picture's already starting to appear, isn't it? Um, this is a wash. The glaze is one colour over another, and wash is your first coat on. And we can graduate or we can variegate. So I can vary this one, I can vary the wash. As I come down here. Make it stronger or darker, warmer or cooler, and just painting wet into the wet. I want to put a little bit stronger there, so I'm going to put a bit more of a yellow into there to really make that stand out. You see how that varies now, so this is a variegated wash. And I'll bring some greens into this while it's still wet in a minute. This I want to be the same colour, nice and bright. A fairly strong in the yellow here. Right around there. I'm going to be green through that later. Put blue into it. I can mix on the paper as well, remember. I don't just have to mix my blue and yellow to make green in the palette. I can actually mix it. Right around to there. Quite strong in there. I'm going to make those yellows a bit stronger into here. That's a hard edge going to be there, so I'll let that dry off. And all these little bits of light that are coming through here. thin colour here because I want it to be a little bit lighter. So that brighter yellow is just coming down through the edge there. You see how I'm vari variegating it there. Right down through here. I'm going to put a lot more blue over, turquoise over this to um, gradually tint it to be in the green before dropping darker colours in when it's still wet. I want very soft wet into wet areas down here. So that's rather fun, isn't it? We can see how that works. Mm. 
Right, now I want to start making it a bit greener. So it's a very acidy green, it's warmer in places. Um, let's have a look at the cooler green. I have to look at my colour chart here because it's really difficult to see the paints when they're in, in these boxes. But here I can see where the more turquoise greens are. So I'm not quite a turquoise green, that one. So let's have a look at that one. It's a lovely, lovely turquoise, cool green. And I want wet into wet with that at the moment. And I think sharp edges in later. I'm going to just turn it all into green, so I'm going to just dabble the paint on. It's not too wet, just making little leaf shapes amongst it. And there you can see the sunlight coming through the leaves. There we go. Now a little bit warmer to that in a minute. This wet into wet effect at the moment. And some of these are going to be warmer greens, so I'm going to put these cooler ones up first and just get the sunlight. Now you see what happens when you paint wet onto dry. If you paint wet into wet, look, and I'll do that just here, then we get it spreading in on a lovely furry effect. If I paint wet onto the dry, like that, we get a sharper edge. So I have a choice of lost and found edges. going to be all white up here. The leaves coming into it quite dark against it here. You can come over again and make it darker still. But if I go over the paint again, if I've got this wash going in now, when I put one colour over another, that becomes a glaze because watercolour is transparent. Um, it will let the colour underneath come through. So, I'm just going to start to use these the sharp edges, the tint into here, right down through here. And I'm going to put some of the purple and magenta into there in a moment. And let's do these yellows and cools first. I have some much warmer greens to put on the top of this yet. All of this needs to be painted in, and I'm painting that as a glaze over the yellows I've got, just leaving a little bit of the yellow showing through. I like your pictures. Thank you. Very nice. Yeah. I, I do miss France. The lifestyle, <laughs> although things have changed towards us now a bit because of yeah. Brexit, which is a shame, but yeah. what can you expect, really? I mean, yeah. you, you deserve it. No, it's great. Thanks. I like your style, anyway. But now let's have a look at some of these warmer leaves as well. So if I take a, a much warmer green, I have got quite a nice selection of greens in here actually, so I haven't got to mix them all this time, but this is a much warmer green. I would make it normally with something like ultramarine, or you could use ceruline. I want to just slightly cooler, but ultramarine and a bit of yellow ochre will give you a lovely warm green. Let's see what this one does. This is a fairly warm one. I may have to add a little bit of yellow ochre to it, or it wants to it. Let's just do that. Yes. Well, that's a pretty warm green. You can see the difference between there, this cool green and these warm green. So you see the wet into wet happening there, which is lovely effects you can get. I can keep dropping darker colours into that, just to get the illusion of these darker leaves when it gets another hand. Now let's go for some much darker blue into this. Let's really start to look at um, the rich, deep, cool dark. So a little bit of purple into it as well. Mm -hmm. Normally I would start using Prussian at this stage, but I haven't got Prussian in this palette. So I'm going to use some very deep ultramarine in this case. You see the lovely dark colours we can get coming into there with the shadow down to it. So a little bit of deep purple here into it, French ultramarine. Start getting these lovely cool darks back into here. Working our, from our lights gradually up to our darker colours. Yeah. Another thing with these Russian paints is they are much stronger than many of the finer watercolours. 
to Richard Lee I'll see if I can use a bit of um, raw umber with the ultramarine just to really get a few darker warms into this. And see how much warmer that is compared to the blue I was using earlier. And it'll give me a lot more depth of colour back here against these lights I'm going to have back here with the nasty removal later. Right, let's have a walk around the show, so we can see what it's like. See my watercolour just starting off. So North Links Art Society here. Nick Craven's lovely work. You can see how he works up his pastels and oils. Lovely detailed work and fantastic work on steam trains and motorbikes if you need a commission doing on that. He'll happily do that for you. Right now as soon as that's all dry, which it isn't yet, I've got to get all of this masking fluid off and then I can really start to pick out these that details and other colours behind. I can start to make harder edges, I can bring out the flowers and I can start to go around these and shapes if I want to. So let's see how we're going to do that. Keeping it fairly loose, working from loose with a big brush and gradually going tighter and tighter. Right, hopefully this um, masking fluid is now, the paint is now dry on that. It's still so one keeping bits of wet on it. So I should be able now to rub off the masking fluid. Yeah. I want the paint to be a little bit dry, yet it's still not quite dry. Well, I can help get all the masking fluid off at last, it's just dry enough. I spoiled it a little bit because I've got some smudging going on, but you can see now the white, green, sharp spaces of the masked areas. Up here, look, you see how that comes off and it's nice and sharp edged. And now I can start painting in the brighter colours of the flowers. And, and I want to start with the lighter areas here. I've got, I've got a bit of smudging over that area. So I've got to start with lighter colours. Now that's quite warm, it's quite pink. So I think I'm going to start with... Uh, it's quite a cool warm, a little bit of magenta there. What's our nearest colour on here? Um, from the Russian paints can't read Russian but it's Madder Lake on this one it's going to be about what I want to be I think so we'll take a little touch of that and I'll just show you and it's funny how different brands of colours um, differ so much they have some of them have their own names for colours much like household paints do um, but colours different colours from different makes of paints can differ a lot as well for instance the Orion in yellow in Windsor and Newton um, is very transparent um, but if when you buy it from the SAA, the artist watercolours there, it's much, much warmer, still transparent, but much more orange than the lemon yellow colour of the Orion and yellow in Windsor and Newton. So, again, it's horses for courses. You need to find these things out gradually. Let's have a look at this then. So, the colour I wanted was the Madder. Let's see if it's going to be cool enough. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's quite a nice light pink, and I'm going to have to put some red into it, so quite light there at the moment. No, it's a bit mucky, that. that's better. So that's, you see how lightly I'm painting it? I remember watercolour will dry about two tones lighter than when you paint it on, so I'm going to paint wet into wet with this one. So that's the warmer pink here. Now while that's still wet, I want to come into that and I'll drop in a little bit of a purple which will be much cooler. You see how beautiful that works in there. I'm just giving you an idea of how we can work wet into wet at the moment and let it just flood down. There's also going to be some slightly warmer areas in there too. So that was a cool red, in other words a bluer red. You see how much different how different that is to that earlier cooler red. So now we can play the warm against the cool. So we've got light next to dark, warm next to cool, rough next to smooth. Very cool there, and then warm here to bring those out. 
So when I say warm next to cool, if I want to make something seem warmer, I don't have to paint more and more warm colour in. I can paint cooler colour next to it to make it seem warmer. The same with a light or a dark. If I want something darker, I can paint something lighter next to it to the other way around. So you see how that cool there makes this cool red seem warmer. And then when I put even redder into that, warmer into that, it comes out even more. So a little bit more of that while it's still wet, a little bit more of those reds just into that. And then look how cool that remains around it. Now if I want to make this cool area in the flowers here even cooler, let's take a little bit of the ultramarine from earlier, that's that lovely blue, and we'll just drop a bit of that blue into here. And you see the difference that that makes, because it makes the other warm seem much warmer comparatively. So you see how that blue then now brings out it's a comparison of the colours. And that's just wet into wet, so we get this soft, slightly out of focus effect. Again, I'll use that blue up here. Now you see how that's going slightly, slightly dry. It's got a hard edge. So this is where I brought this little atomizer along, this diffuser. And if I take that and I want to just soften those edges, one little squirt like that, and that wets the whole area. I can now go back in and drop in these. a lovely purple look and it now goes wet into wet or I can take the dry area there and I can go over that dry area as a glaze so it's no longer a wash it's no longer one color it's one color over another which is a glaze you see that's against that's wet on dry so I'm getting a hard edge there what I'll do deliberately now is just use a bit of that spray to show you how we can make it blend not too much I was once painting um, in New Zealand and uh, at a primary school there and I was doing some cows, a large cow on the field and in various different colours and I was painting very much wet into wet and went to spray it because it was getting dry and wasn't really looking what I was doing and put one or two too many sprays on and the whole cow started sliding down the painting because it had got too wet <laughs> which was causing some amusement but I managed to bring it back so again one or two little sprays and look how that now give it a minute as it say if you keep spraying it it'll just go totally wet now you see it's just now starting to spread now if I want to go slightly stronger but you know it's going to dry lighter I can go in again with the colors and I can still drop them in while it's still wet and the drier it gets the less it will spread and the sharper the edges will become. So I can gradually get more and more detailed. And we can put sharp ridges in once it's dry later. I want to go a little bit richer than that. So I'll, start, I'll go again into my deeper reds. Just drop in a little bit of very dark. And that's about got the effect of those, those flowers there. So I'm now going to do the rest, the same with the rest of them. Come in with these warmer colours. That's one of the things about watercolour that we cannot teach. It's something you've just got to practice. Um, watercolour is a lot of controlled accident, so you have to know how wet the paper's got to be, how much paint to put on, how much pigment in the paint. These are things you've just got to explore by feel. Um, so here I've got to look at that, and just at the right time, I want to drop wet into wet, but if it's too wet, it'll spread out too much, and if it's too dry, it will just give hard edges, so just in the centre of that look, just a little tickle of that colour coming down into the middle, and I've got to allow that, see how it's spreading out now, if I do too much paint and it's too wet, it'll spread over the whole thing and I've lost the whole thing. Dark in the centre, now you see that lovely light around there, where we've, where we've got light against dark. As it gets drier, I can start to paint the harder edges in of these stems, like that there, you see. Let's just get all of these light colours in first. We're working in reverse, we're working from our lights to our darks gradually. There's a colour coming in up here. I haven't got the darks in here yet and that'll make a lot of difference because my lights will appear lighter when I put the darks in, obviously because the darks will show against the lights. Again, I'll say it again, rough against smooth, light against dark, warm against cool. We're going to play the opposites. In watercolour, we've got soft, distant edges. When I put the harder dry edges in and those softer edges are going to look softer. 
through these lovely colours we can get right the way through here. I'll bring in some lighter yellows in a minute as well. I just want to get these pinks established in here. The darker colours. Now I'm going to paint these lovely dark stems in at the end because they're going to be darker than the rest of the paint on here which means that they will go over the top. So we've left all our lights behind and these stronger dark colours and details can go in at the end. Now look, it's gone a bit dry there, so I'm going to come back with my spray and just get a bit of spray going on there. Hopefully now you're beginning to see the effect we can get using these lovely rich warms and cools against each other. I'm going to put some more glazing of the, the greens and yellows over the top of this spot. Okay, let that dry back a bit. Now whilst we're waiting, let's take my bigger over mop again and just take some of that lovely lemon yellow from earlier. I need to just clean things up a bit first. So it's a nice impression this piece. Nice and loose. We start loose but you finish tight. We can't start tight and go loose, can we? And these heavier paints, these Russian paints, do allow us to put on slightly more opaque colours as well, which is quite nice. So now I need to let this dry off a bit because um, I want to start painting some harder edges in. So, I'm just going to bring a bit more of these lights through. Now here we're talking about glazing, but let's take some of the ultramarine blue and just start to drop that in some of these darker areas here. Just to really find these cools and its warms. It's nice and cool, I haven't taken off there yet. to overwork it and make it too sooty. And the paper's quite cotton. I haven't stretched this paper, so it's um, not lying as flat as I would like. Back to the cooler greens again. We'll just bring a few more of these back into here. It's almost worked up enough now. I can't need to do much more. Just link a few of these colours in. Okay, we we'll let it dry back a bit. Right, let that dry off. We'll remove some of these light areas here. I think we've got a lot more to do. This is absolutely fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> I, can, I can just see this done in, in fabric. I can see thousands of little tiny bits That's of fabric. Nice, or... it, yeah, when you can see that happening. Yeah. These are your ideas, yeah. Right, well I think I've just about done all I'm going to do on that without overworking it. I'm just going to ask Mick if I can borrow a couple of his pastels. I just want to bring a couple of highlights back out. Mick's here working with pastel and these lovely animals again, the dog in particular. Um, I'm sure he'd be kind enough to let me borrow a couple of his greens just to tidy up at the end here. And I think that's going to do me today. It's been fun. You've enjoyed it and I hope you'll uh, come and see the exhibition if you're still in dates for you and uh, maybe have a go at a watercolour like this yourself. Do that.